right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about finding vanishing points for creating perspective drawings. So I've got some photographs here that, um, that we're going to take a look at. Now I've already got the horizon line placed on these. And again, cityscapes, anything that's very definite, um, you know, buildings, cars, things like that, we can find fairly easily the, their diminishments. And by using the diagonals, you can take these out and you can find the vanishing point. So this is one point, this is a one point perspective. Now sometimes, you know, you'll have, you, the camera may have been held at a slight angle or the buildings may not be exactly straight or you've got an uneven plane or something like that happening. And so, not everything may end up at, a, at the same place, but when we're drawing, we're, we're trying to create order and we're gonna use a correct vanishing point. We can build in the, the variance later uh, as far as that goes. And uh, even when you're hand sketching, as long as you seem to be, you know, these seem to be vanishing at a particular vanishing point, you'll be fine. Um, if you're doing drafting, you're, you're, you're probably going to try to keep it a little closer. There might be times where you're varying it because you, you're understanding a perspective and what's happening in the scene. But, and not all these are, are perfect coming off of here, but we can see that these are hitting our horizon line at about this point. And so we would go ahead and we would create or mark that as our as our vanishing point. Let's make this a little larger here so we can actually see the thing. But this right here would be our vanishing point using the diminishments to locate that, again, the vanishing point on the horizon line. So again, this would be our, our one point vanishing point. This is a one point perspective scenario this is our horizon line, and if we went ahead and cleared out our guide so we can see it, again, there is our horizon line, and here's our vanishing point that we would use for this scene. All right, so let's try another one. So this is pretty clear, a, a very clear one-point perspective. Um, let's go and try this one. So this is also one-point perspective. Again, I've put the vanishing point in here. I was standing on the street just like these people, and they're about, they were about the same height, so it was very easy to place this. You can also find it by using your diminishments. You could go ahead and come over here and say, well, let's take the underside of these windows and bring it back. And then we can go ahead and say, all right, and then we'll take you know, this line here that's very long and very easy to kind of spot, and we take that. And we could then find, you know, the horizon line would be where these diminishments are, are hitting the horizon. Here's the, sometimes the lines in the street aren't exact, you know, they're not straight if you've ever seen someone do them. But they're, they're close, but they're not going to be exact. And the street is also mounded, so that's why we bring this over here. Like, wait, what's going on? Well, what's going on is that this is not a flat plane. So, whereas over here on the building, it would be more of a flat plane. And again, we could take this and line this up. And again, it's pretty much, there's our vanishing point. So using those diminishments, we can find the vanishing points and we can also find the horizon line. Now again, I placed it very, the horizon line very quickly because I said, look, I know I was standing and again, these guys were about as tall as I was or close enough. And again, many times close enough is, is good enough, but even if it's, you know, once we lock in that horizon line, we've made the decision. We make sure that everything will then conform to that horizon line. And so, you know, we make sure that our world conforms to that. And if we do that, it's not a problem. We can, you know, we can go ahead and place the horizon line and then go ahead and make sure that everything conforms to the horizon line. And even if we're not, you know, totally 100% exact, and there's very few things that are 100% exact, but close enough. And then if we make all if we make all the buildings conform to this, then it will work. 
So again, horizon line, we've got our vanishing points here. And if you wanted to mark really quickly some of these vanishing points, you'd take this from here to there, and then this would come from, these windows would diminish to there, and the top of this building would diminish to the vanishing point, so forth and so on. All right. So this right here, we can see that that line is not quite lining up. So that means that, that I moved my, that means that this vanishing point should, should be over here a little more. And if we looked at some of these lines, the lines over here, we'd probably find that, you know, again, this would probably be a better vanishing point. But let's say, you know, for this scene, if I was trying to replicate the photograph, if I was hand drawing this, again, as long as this building conforms to that vanishing point, it's not a problem. So let's go ahead and go to another one. Again, it's all about placing a vanishing point. We do want to get it as close as possible, but again, we're not going to sweat the, we're going to lighten this up because this is so dark. So let's go ahead and lighten this through there. All right, so we've got our horizon line here. Now when we have two point perspective, it's going to kick out, the vanishing points will kick out a little further on the horizon line. Again, we've got our horizon line right here. And so I'll just go ahead and mark this for right now. Whoops. Try that again, shall we? And let's see, that's okay. There we go. There's the horizon line. Pull back out so we can actually see what's going on here. Let's clear out that guide. No, I'm going to keep the guide because the line won't go outside the photograph. And this guide does so we can see because it's going to, the, again, the, the vanishing points are going to kick way, way, way out here. So again, if I take this, this is going to be a vanishing point. Take the, the top of the roof line. We're going to have the right vanishing point somewhere over here. Now the roof is a little bowed. I don't know if you can see that. But again, we're trying to establish a vanishing point. And then we, we just will conform the drawing to the vanishing point. And as long as we are consistent, it will have perspective. Even if we're hand sketching, you know, our eyes are really clumsy with angles. So we, might, we may not be actually setting points. We're actually guesstimating points. And as long as it looks like they could be diminishing and performing to a vanishing point, it'll feel like it has perspective. Now there's certain times we might get very formal with things and plot things as they call it, uh, whether in the computer or whether you're doing it by hand. Um, if you're doing it on, by computer and you're doing a three foot by four, or six or eight foot painting, you're, you're gonna have to do those by hand, obviously. You're not gonna be able to print that out unless you print it out in sections or something like that. But you're gonna, you'd have to, you'd be easier to lay this out by hand if that was the case. So again, all these, the roof lines coming down to the, this, this roof is coming down to this. They're all performing to a right or left vanishing point because we're talking about one, and uh, not one, but two point perspective. We have two vanishing points. We have the vanishing point out here. That's our right vanishing point. And we have our vanishing point out here. That's our left vanishing point. And again, they're way off the page. We're not going to get a ton into, into tracking what we call, well, these distant vanishing points. You use what are called diminishment guides. And there's a way of placing them so that you have a more accurate perspective. It won't be 100%, but it'll be close enough that if you use them, people will be like, yeah, that looks, that looks true. That looks great. That looks perfect. So again, we've gone ahead and defined the the left and right vanishing point for this church and um, and that's what we want to do now we're gonna have to at some point and we do talk about this in this class we have what are called multiple vanishing points in the scene so this road goes to a vanishing point that's right here because the the church is not quite lined up the roads not straight to the church now, if I was painting this, you might say, well, what if I, what, I can make it perform to this vanishing point over here? Yeah, we could. 
and you know because sometimes there's something you can look at a photograph and go yeah that's right but you draw it and it looks wrong and so we might make the road perform with a vanishing point so it doesn't look like that the church is out of whack because it looks like the church is now turned more than the road and again there's things you can get away with in a photograph that just won't work when you draw it people will, be, will assume that you just can't draw because it looks strange it's easier to see that there's something uh, that's not happening when we have a photograph our brain goes yeah you know our that photograph must be right because it's a photo and we don't have that luxury when we draw again this is 90 you know close to 90 degrees this other road and again it doesn't quite perform to this vanishing point because these roads aren't exactly 90 degrees but once again um, so it's over it's over here on the horizon line different vanishing point but once again if I was trying to make this more concise more clear for people I would have it perform to both vanishing points so that it doesn't look odd um, you could still use the multiple vanishing points if you're careful if you know what you're doing if you're if not it can start to look strange so for now we'll just say yeah we'll make everything perform to one of these two vanishing points so if this road here would come over here to this vanishing point this road coming off of here would come this is the front and it would come over here to the to the right vanishing point and and this side of the road would come to the right vanishing point you know you'd have everything where you'd use the right or left side of the vanishing points so again very effective for us let's go ahead and try this one last one where we're going to be, have another two point perspective so we're going to have two vanishing points a right a right vanishing point over here and a left vanishing point over here already have the horizon line this had a low vantage point I was kneeling when I took this shot and so it's a much lower vantage point um, the street kind of raises up and then comes back down a little bit toward the other side so understand the road isn't quite a flat plane and um, that may not mean a lot to us right now but that just means there might be some variance because of that um, as you get more comfortable with perspective and, and play with it a little bit more you can start to get more creative with it but if I take this out now this might not be the best one to start with because it's so short this one's a little longer if I take this out to there and I take this out this one right here take this out to about there and we have our right vanishing point and if we put it in the right place and if the building is straight and if the building is true and all that good stuff it should go ahead and perform and it is to that vanishing point this object and also the street if we now this is street is rounded off the corner is but it starts to pick up the straight part of the street right there and again we could take that to the vanishing point this is curved but if these were lined up they're actually at a slight angle but if these were lined up straight and again I might straighten them out if I was drawing just because it might be easier to draw it would conform to that right vanishing point this sign if this sign is straight it should be and I, and I line it up with the edge then it should come over to my right vanishing point okay like whoops like so okay whoops that's all right but you get the idea again if we come over here and this is our left vanishing point and if we place that properly all these should go ahead and conform to that left vanishing point and they do for the most part and again if I'm drawing hand drawing this and the moment I set a vanishing point I'm using it you know you want to get it as as proper as possible but once you lock it in that's that's it you're gonna perform everything will perform to the right and left vanishing point because once again this is a two-point perspective scenario as opposed to the first two we did were one point perspective there was only one vanishing point on the horizon line this has two vanishing points on the horizon line if I was gonna paint these you know we can only see one of it in the crosswalk but let's say there were more of them well this edge right here this would then perform to that two-point perspective left vanishing point now we might say well I kind of missed the corner on that but even if I placed it closer to the correct corner and brought this back we're going to see that we're chopping and cutting it a little bit why is that well this is also mounted which is going to cause distortion in that line also again the people painting these lines may not be 
it may not be exactly 90 degrees you know to this these lines over here in other words it's not truly parallel that will give you some variance but again it's pretty close we can see that it's that's very close if we were trying to get this line that's going down the street and then we wanted to make it straight now this isn't straight but if we wanted to deal with that that would then be a performing into this this vanishing point over there of course the street would be performing to this vanishing point this street light over here would be performing to this vanishing point over here um, just all that good stuff and then if, of course if we were doing with two-point perspective all the verticals would be truly vertical and you know the windows and and uh, these turrets or whatever we want to call them the turrets is like for a castle but this is uh, but anyways they're basically these rounded you know sections on the corner but so you'd have your verticals, you'd have your vanishing points. We'd be all ready to go on this thing. So again, being able to find vanishing points are very important. So as we are, as we're looking at scenes, as we're drawing things, try to identify the vanishing points. And the easiest way to find the vanishing point is by using at least two diminishments that are you know coming away outside and where they meet so if i brought this diminishment out where that meets and where this diminishment comes out and meets and this diminishment comes out and meets that's our vanishing points and also that then ha also has us we have identified the horizon line so it gives us the vanishing points and our horizon line so go ahead and think about this and, and start looking for and identifying where the vanishing points are in your scenes so that way we can use perspective very effectively all right Good luck and uh, join me again for another drawing adventure. Until then, you guys take care.